Welcome to the show from the soapbox to the stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. Now, I'd like to welcome my newest viewers watching this show on the Public Access Channel in Windsor, Connecticut, a town just north of Hartford. If you've ever dreamed of standing on a stage to inspire, educate, or motivate an audience, then stay tuned. I'll be interviewing top speakers and sharing tips on each episode for helping aspiring speakers, as well as those who've already stepped onto a stage, how to move from public speaker to professional speaker. Now many professional speakers part of their business marketing plan, but how many of those actually get invited back to do it again? Only those with the talent and professional business skills that meeting planners and event organizers are looking for. That's what viewers will learn here as they hear from professional speakers who've been there and have done that. Now with me on the show today is Bob Steele, professional speaker, former CIA officer and one-time U.S congressman. He's the author of the new book, The Curse, Big Time Gambling Seduction of a Small New England Town. Mr. Steele is a graduate of Amherst College and Columbia University and is the recipient of an honorary doctorate from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. Thank you so much for coming out, Bob. Glad to be here, Bill. And uh, you've got an interesting story to tell. And the first thing I want to know is uh, I'm very intrigued by, by your book, The Curse. And uh, what I want to do is I want to find a little bit more about how you got here, but tell us about the book. Well, the book is a novel set against the explosion of casino gambling in Connecticut back in the 1990s when two Indian tribes built the world's two biggest casinos in southeastern Connecticut. And uh, the story starts with the Pequot War back in the 1600s when the Connecticut colonists living up and down the Connecticut River from Windsor down to Old Saybrook got together with their Mohegan allies and defeated and almost destroyed the Pequots. And uh, the book uh, then jumps some 350 years as these two tribes, the Mashantucket Pequots uh, and the, uh, and the uh, Mohegans, uh, reemerge almost miraculously under the law, thanks to Congress and the courts, to build the world's two biggest casinos. And in the story, a fictional Connecticut family becomes embroiled in a battle to stop a third casino that threatens the family's town and ancestral home. Interesting. So it's, it's, it's the backdrop is reality. Yeah, it's a novel set against the factual background of what, uh, of what happened here in Connecticut. That's exactly right. So how, why did you write this book? How did you come about writing this? Well, I, uh, I represented Eastern Connecticut, where the, the casinos are, in Congress during the 1970s. Uh, and then I left Congress to run for governor of Connecticut. I was unsuccessful. And I left politics, and my family, my wife and four children, and I moved from Vernon, where we had lived for a decade, uh, down to Ledger before the casinos came. And those two experiences, knowing the political backdrop, so to speak, of Connecticut as intimately as I did, and then living in the midst of this enormous gambling explosion gave me the equivalent of a front row seat for, for seeing the political maneuverings that led to the casinos and then seeing their impact firsthand. Hmm. Well, if I can get, uh, I can ask the control room to, to show his uh, book one more time. Now, what was it like for you to go to write this? First of all, how long did it take you to write it? And how did you craft the story to create uh, this novel? Well, it's uh, the first book I've ever written, certainly the first novel I've ever tried to write. And uh, it took me uh, many years to do it, mainly because uh, the real way to write a book is to uh, get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and work a, a very rigorous schedule. I wrote this part-time while I was uh, uh, at a full-time job, a couple jobs, uh, traveling around the world for my company. I wrote it on airplanes. I wrote it in Europe. I wrote it in China. I wrote it in my library. I wrote it all kinds of places. Uh, so it took a little longer than it, it should have. But once I had gotten it completed and found a publisher and published it, then a second opportunity began to emerge, and that is a very timely issue. And certainly your, your viewers in Massachusetts uh, uh, know that. So yeah. one, I, I had what I thought was a fascinating story, and fortunately the reviewers have thought that way. And then I had, in back of that, a very current and, and very important issue, and that is the explosion of casino gambling in Connecticut, throughout New England, and indeed throughout the country. Now, in, uh, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I'm getting a copy. Uh, what did you handle in the book the whole, 
the opposing sides between, yeah, it's a good thing, not no, it's not a good thing? Is that handled in the novel? Oh, yeah. Or this you is, touch on it? This is a battle between uh, uh, between a family that's trying to preserve its its character and its values and its and the, its its ancestral home and farm, and uh, and the casino industry coming into town after town across America, uh, and uh, it's a very very real uh, drama that's playing out across America right now. So it's a it's a drama that could happen in almost any town, and uh, I realized uh, having written the book and as I. As I began to speak at a few libraries, and then I'd get more and more invitations to speak, and it just kind of multiplied. And I, I hadn't anticipated a kind of second speaking career, but it has just uh, uh, developed. So will you be willing to say then that uh, your new strain of a speaking career is taking off because of the book? Exactly. Ah, interesting. Well, because of the book and because it's against a very current and important uh, and controversial issue. It is. And as you, as you kind of hinted before in Massachusetts, is just starting to get in, embroiled in that because of the new casino coming in in western Massachusetts and how uh, we're seeing the opposing sides, both sides, as to the, the, the pluses and the minuses of having uh, the casino in western Mass. Well, that's right. And it's not just western Mass, of course. It's uh, all over the state of Massachusetts, uh, uh, Boston, uh, Taunton, uh, uh, the, the, the proposals for casinos have really been uh, all over the state of Massachusetts. So do you mm. do any other speaking besides just for the book? Well, I had a career in uh, politics and in government, and uh, I, uh, you know, I grew up in a, uh, in a radio family, and uh, I grew up listening to the radio all the time um, because it was always on in our house. But there's a big difference between listening and trying to do it yourself and trying to be a speaker. So. It wasn't until uh, I, uh, I sought to, uh, to run for Congress and was really thrown into the maelstrom of, of, of being a speaker. And uh, so I had to learn pretty fast, at least uh, to the best of my ability. So what kind of things do you speak on now? Do you speak on things other than your book, obviously? Well, I, I, right now uh, I'm on an author's tour uh, of uh, New England and New York, uh, speaking to libraries, uh, civic clubs, uh, um, colleges, uh, historical societies, uh, uh, book clubs, uh, various groups. And uh, I've been doing that actually for the last year. I thought this might last for six months or so, but I'm already scheduling well into 2015 now. So it's, a, it's the kind of subject that uh, just continues to build on itself and build interest. So this is the subject I'm talking about at the present time. So the other stuff that you did leading up to developing the book, are you retired from that? I'm retired from my main job, but I'm still uh, active in, uh, in business, yeah. Okay, a couple of questions here, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, people call in and, uh, and ask me to ask questions of speakers. First of all, do you use a press kit? You know, I don't use a press kit, but what I've done is really turn my, uh, my uh, website into a, a press kit. So people can go to your website yeah, to get what they need. Yeah, that's been very effective. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have products other than this book that you use as a speaker? No, I really don't. I, uh, uh, there, there's no other product, although I'm very familiar with the literature in the field mm -hmm. and, and can talk about it as well. But the real product is, uh, is the book and, and, and even more important than that, the subject, which is to me is a, a very important subject because this explosion of casino gambling is having a profound negative impact on our society and I think it's an important story to tell because very seldom is this side of the story told. Do you personally take a position one side or the other and do you reveal that to your audience? Well the book and the final analysis certainly takes a position and uh, I certainly uh, I try to give uh, uh, both sides but uh, I do indeed take a position. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, your thoughts on speakers bureaus. Have you ever used a speakers bureau before? You know, when I was in Congress, I used the speakers bureau uh, uh, quite a bit, and I found it very, very effective. I spoke all over the country um, thanks to the speakers bureau. Uh, I'm not using one at the present time. I think, uh, I think I had a different platform when I was in Congress, uh, but uh, I am considering using one now because this continues to grow and I think uh, the platform is becoming big enough to use a speaker's bureau. Great. Um, how about uh, do, you, do you go out to 
assertively find your audience or do your, does your audience come to find you? It's really both. Is uh, it? Yeah, I think it has to be both. I mean, it, I would say at first it was more my going out to find the audience, although uh, I found that after I had spoken on the subject uh, to various venues, uh, more and more of the invitations uh, came in on their own. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is we're about to go to break, and what I'd like to do is uh, when we come back, if you would stay with me, I'd like to get your uh, take on tips for people Absolutely. that are coming up the route of speaking as part of their business and, and offer them some suggestions. Sure. All right. Uh, for some speakers, the Q&A segment of a presentation is an afterthought. But for truly professional speakers, when handled well, it can be the audience's lasting impression of the speaker. Now, I'm going to ask Bob to stay with me through the break and explain how to make the most of this presentation component. Don't go away. We'll be right back.